Hey, this is Scott Spears, and I'd like to welcome you to a special edition of Scott Spears Now. And uh, for those of you in Marion, we have had an amazing couple weeks here. Uh, we talked about it last time Mary Ellen was with us, but uh, we were celebrating the 30th anniversary of Mary Ellen being sworn in as the 40th Treasurer of the United States. And we did that by going to four different schools and having a reception at Kingston. And we did this over two days, 2,500 people. Uh, Matt and Carrington and myself, Sean did all the photography and videotaping. And uh, Mary Ellen gave the speech that she had given 30 years earlier, March the 1st, 1994. And this was March the first, February 29th and March the 1st, 2024. It was amazing in a lot of ways. We're going to talk about this. We all knew it would be good, but the Associated Press picked up on it. It was on Fox News. It was in newspapers across the country. It was on uh, television stations across the country. That Friday, the day, March 1st, 2024, Mary Ellen, as you can see, was on the cover of the Marion Star. A very nice picture, the headline reading, Celebrating Life and Career of U.S. <laughs> Treasurer. And just when you thought it was all over, the following Thursday, now how many people make the front page of the paper twice in one week yes, while this right. is all going on? <laughs> a picture from us at Pleasant, which we're going to talk about that because that was an amazing event. Cheers of joy greet Marion native former U.S. Treasurer Withrow recognized on 30th anniversary of swearing into office. Both great articles. You can read these, get these online. Uh, it's certainly worth the read. Mary Ellen, going in, did you expect to happen? What happened? Did you think it was? Well, I tell you, it was wonderful. I didn't know what to expect, but I just thought the whole thing was wonderful, and I was so glad we did it. I was so glad you planned all of that. You know, uh, we were talking about Pleasant, and I do want to talk about this. All the schools were great, and we, so, we thank them all for having us in Kingston for the reception. But this picture is from Pleasant. That's the one they took to put on the front page of the paper. There were 750 students, every seat filled, people in the aisles, people on the sides of, of the theater there. And there was a standing ovation at the end of that. And we've talked about it on air, Matt and Carrington and I. Um, Matt has said he teared up. It was the climax of a movie. What was that moment like for you, Mary Ellen? Oh, it was unreal. I, I just was in awe that they had all stood up like that and cheered and, and raised their arms up, and it, it was just great. And and this headline is exactly what it was, yes. cheers of joy. It yes, was that. it was. And you know something else, and I'll go to River Valley for this, because this happened at River Valley. Um, a, a student asked if you were going to sign autographs. <laughs> and we had to cut it off because yeah. there was a line so long and kept growing. It yes. was just, I mean, were you surprised by that in a way, Mary Ellen? I should have known better. <laughs> I, sh I should have said I wasn't going to sign anything because, you know, every time I did that in when I was any time, you, you just got a huge crowd. I did one in, in San Francisco one time that... They got into a fight, um, the people in line, uh, and we had um, we had people there that were supposed to keep things in order. They were uh, Secret Service men, but they didn't have on any uniforms, and um, they couldn't they couldn't keep get the fight stopped. And in the that was in the morning, and then in the afternoon, um, we had policemen with uniforms on and we didn't have any trouble. It makes a big difference if you have a, a uniform on or not when people are trying to make a fight. You know, in, I, I am so glad in a way that we did do the autograph signing because there's a moment in that that was is something that lives on in my mind. There was a girl, I think she was 17, and it was after we had cut off doing the autographs and we were mm -hmm. just doing pictures at that point. And this girl came up and she had a real dollar bill in her hand. And she said, um, can I get this autographed? And I said, I'm sorry, we had, to, we had to stop that. And this girl looked stricken. Her face looked stricken. And she told me the story about she knew you were coming that day. And she worked at a local establishment, Jersey. She worked yeah. at the Jersey. Jersey yeah. And the night before, she had went through all the money that was coming in, trying to find a dollar bill with your name on it to get signed. And so... 
the truth can be told now. We told her just to stand over to the side, and we did autograph it at the end. But that was such a great story, it I thought. It was, yes. I, I, I was amazed that she found a dollar bill with my name on it. <laughs> well, that she went to all that trouble. Yes, well, that there aren't very many out there. <laughs> yeah, I was just, I was so impressed by her for doing that. I thought, there's another thing that's very, very, very nice. And Kingston, we have to thank them for the great reception they had. Yes. They had drinks and they had uh, hors d'oeuvres. And um, that was great in a way because two of your daughters got to come to that. Yes. It, it was a wonderful event. And they had balloons um, all around me. <laughs> yeah, red, red, white, and blue. Yeah, red, white, and blue balloons, all different sizes. It was very clever what they'd done. And... They were so nice, and we had a pretty good crowd, too. We did, and it was interesting because going to the cars that day, and as we were wrapping everything up, that was our last stop, mm -hmm. I was talking to your daughter, uh, Becky, and she had said that um, she didn't remember much from the actual swearing-in. Yes, that's, she told me that, too. Yeah, but she, So she said this was so great to be there mm -hmm. when you gave the speech again. Mm -hmm. And that's why it was emotional for her to yeah. be a part of that. Yeah. I thought, who would have thought that? That's so great. You know, um, they, the, the, they were um, standing over to the side of where I was sworn in on the other, uh, you know, where Marshall Bennett was at the end and they were on down. And they didn't get in the picture, but um, they were nervous too. I mean, you know, my grandchildren, I had um, four, I see, four grandchildren there. And, um, you know, I can imagine that they didn't catch a lot of it, you know, because they were so nervous, yeah. Well, and I think now, being 30 years later, uh, it's a different perspective, I think, at this point, too, to look back on what was mm -hmm. and what still is. Yes. Right. You know, it's a great. It's it, it, everybody involved was just so happy to be involved with it. So I, I, I just it, it's something. You know, you never know going into something how it's going to turn out. But that that to me was an A plus. You know, that's right. It, but it, <clears throat> I I thought it was so clever that you you did it like it was, because it was an anniversary. But. You know, we could have done something else, and I don't think it would have meant near as much. No, and you know, it, I was, it's it's interesting you bring that up, because I was talking to Matt and Carrington, who are new to the broadcast business, and I believe it was the first time either one of them had spoken in front of crowds that yeah. size. Mm -hmm. And I had said to them, um, take this and kind of put it in a box and put it in the closet, because this is, it's not always like this. Uh, you don't know. It doesn't always work that well. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's something about that, just the way it was laid out, that it worked every time we did it. Yeah, it was so clever. I, I loved it. And yeah. and then we did it at Kiwanis Pancake Day. And, and there are, I mean, it's still the 30th anniversary year. There have been some more inquiries about doing it other places. So... We'll see what happens. Yeah, that's right. You know, it's, yeah. we're, we're, we, we're not, when a show's that good, that's what, I, the day of the show, I thought, you know, I, I hope that's not the last time we do that, because that, I think it's going well. Yes. Well, you know, I, I didn't know how I'd hold up either. You held up great. I did. You did. But, um, yeah, I, I, I got pretty tired there for a while, but it worked out. <laughs> well, I, I was thinking, being out, because five speeches in two days, five different events, for anybody, that's a little taxing. Probably the first time you've done that in quite a while. What was it like to be back in the, in the saddle again? Oh, it was great. But I used to do a lot of speeches a day. <clears throat> I would do like five speeches a day sometimes, you know. Is it any different now than it was then? Well, I get tired now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get tired then hardly. You know, I didn't. It didn't bother me at all to just keep going. When you are up there giving a speech, are you in the moment? Yeah. Yeah. That that's what I noticed. Yeah. Yeah, because we had talked. I mean. It was too long. We did a radio interview that started the one day, a two-hour interview. Mm -hmm. But I noticed when, when the speech happened, you were there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, yeah. Th I think everybody just comes up for a show like that. Yeah, that's right. So it was... It, it brings you there. It does. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was fun. What was it like giving that speech again when you hadn't done it for 30 years? 
Well, <clears throat> I guess I I liked it better now than I did then. Really? <laughs> yes. I I you know when I when I did the speech, I um I don't know I I I wasn't really oh I was nervous of course, but um. I just felt better about the speech now than I did 30 years ago. Isn't that funny? Well, it yeah. is. It, well, but you know, it's very interesting because um, the newspaper, and, and Mary Ellen, by the way, at the end of this episode is going to read the speech for us in its entirety, which we did not do at all the schools. The first paragraph we left out, so we're going to give the whole thing today. But um, So stay tuned for that. But it's interesting because when the Marion Star did the story, and get this is worth getting, did the story on the speeches, the second story that's in the March 7th edition, they printed the last paragraph oh, of yeah. your speech, yeah. which I think is so poignant. It, it's powerful. It really is. It's very powerful. So you'll yeah. hear that later in this episode, yeah. but it's, um, yeah. what does that part of the speech mean to you? Oh, I, I tell you, that part of the speech I just thought was wonderful. Um, it, it was, it, it really, it came from the heart too because your life is like a river you know and and you can remember some things really well and other things you can't have you've forgotten <laughs> and um but <clears throat> as that that moment was very special and and that's what the paragraph said and you know it also has a very good beginning which, you know, uh, from from the Elgin School Board in Marion to where mm -hmm. you were that day. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's strong on both ends, mm -hmm. which is great. So it was, it was a lot of fun. And like I say, I, there have been inquiries to do it other places. So we'll see what happens. And it's still the 30th anniversary year. I want to get your thoughts, Mary Ellen. There's a lot of talk. We're right in the line here of the eclipse. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. What do you make of all this uh, hysteria as we get closer and it closer? It is hysteria. It is. I said, it's 10 minutes. So people say, have you got your glasses? I said, no. <laughs> and, and they were telling me how to fix my glasses, um, burn a candle in front of the glass and so that it's dimmer, I guess. <laughs> I haven't even got my glasses yet. <laughs> but I don't think I'm going to do that. Um, I, I've i got a person coming from another country uh, that uh, to uh, somebody there at Primrose, and I thought, my goodness, this is really... I, I don't know what to expect. Well, that's the interesting thing. Yeah. I think we're all debating in our mind, is it going to be... You know, streets packed and you can't get anywhere, or is it going to be another day? Well, I mean, things are closed. Um, do you have to do a radio session? We're going to we're going to do something that are day. You? I mean, yeah. to commemorate the event. Yeah. But I, I schools are closed. You could go out and interview people. I could. I could <laughs> fi find out what they thought of that thing. Yeah. But it's also it's also my understanding that if it's cloudy. It really is, we you can't, see we won't see it. <laughs> right. So all these people who are taking all these hotel rooms up, it could be, yeah. and it's April, so yes. there's a good chance it could be cloudy. Yeah. I don't know. It's going to be an interesting time. Um, I wanted to talk about uh, some things, current events here. State of the Union happened recently, and most people I've talked to thought Biden did very well. What did you make of the State of the Union? Oh, I thought it was a wonderful speech. I... I was so happy. I watched the whole thing, and I was so happy when it got done because I thought he did such a good job. And then the person that followed, the Republican person, was such a disaster. <laughs> well, I, you know, I, I want to talk about that because okay. she's taken a lot of uh, heat. Yes, and she has. Let's get her name here. Senator Katie Britz, sitting <laughs> in a kitchen somewhere in the South, um... Saturday night spoof. I think it's Alabama. Was it Alabama? It? I, think it might... I think it was Alabama. I... Saturday night live spoofed it. Uh, people <laughs> said it was the worst response in in terrible. state of the union. What happened? Do you? I... They, they put her in a kitchen, which was very strange. Um, you know, we fought for years trying to get out of the kitchen as a woman. <laughs> yeah. That was odd to put her in a kitchen, I yeah, thought. right. And then she was, her, her tone of voice kept changing as yes. she was giving. Well, and she was doing strange things, too, with her 
movements. Uh, I, I, it was very unusual. <laughs> I, I mean, after you have this performance by Biden, which most people thought was great, mm -hmm. to go to that, because that's usually supposed to be the comeback to it. I don't think that worked very well that night. No. So, I, no. what did you make of Biden? What I thought was interesting, as he was coming in, he wanted to shake everybody's hand, mm -hmm. take pictures with everybody, and even grabbed one woman's photo and said, I'll take the selfie, and took yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. He, and he, I think he was the last one out of the room that night. Well, he was having a good time, I think. Yeah. Do you think that did a lot of good with all this age talk? Yes. Do you think it helped him? Oh, I do. Yes, I, that's why I thought it was so good. It, it helped his, his campaign. And he also addressed his age, which I thought that was mm -hmm. going to be a big question going in. Would he right. bring it up? Right. And he did. Mm -hmm. And his, his uh, if you didn't see it, basically the answer was, you know, yes, I am 81, but uh, it's about who has old ideas. Yes. You, yeah. Do you think that's a good message? Mm -hmm. Is that the one they need to go with? Mm -hmm. And he has had good ideas. What did you make of during the State of the Union, the Speaker of the House's responses and the Republicans responses well <clears throat> they didn't st did they stand up for anything I do not remember anything that they stood up for and there were some things in there they should have stood up for I think if they did it was only once I it was it was few and far between it and was yeah I've been to those and all you do is stand up and sit down, stand up. And it's very tiring. <laughs> <laughs> I bet it would be. Well, what yeah. is it like in there from somebody who's been? Well, I was up in the balcony, of course, and um, it's. Uh, I, I was sitting close to. Um, see, I was in um, our senator's wife's seat, um, John Glenn's John Glenn. wife. Um, yeah. I was in her seat uh, for one of them, and I was very close to, um, to, um, let's see, she was right over, right over there. Um, I think it was John McCain's wife. I, I've got to think about that a while, but anyway, it's, you go through all this, this uh, metal detection, and uh, <clears throat> you finally get there. And and then you stand up and sit down, stand up and sit down, and and, and it was for uh, George H. Bush, not George W. Bush. It was for the father. He had gotten back from. Um, uh, he had finished the war with um, Iraq. Yeah, and uh, and then that was one time I was there. Then I was there for some democratic things too. But, um, yeah, I, I liked going there to watch it. Yeah. That's interesting because that was an historic State of the Union after the Iraq mm -hmm. War. A yeah. Gulf, uh, uh, I forget what, Gulf War, I think is what they called it, yeah. that particular one. Yeah. Um, and at that point, George W. H. W. Bush's approval ratings were something like 90% in this country. Until he talked about the grocery, the, yes. the food going across the... The belt, the uh, scanner, the scanner, yeah, yeah, and then and then, yeah, and and during the debate, looking at his watch, <laughs> yes, didn't that help. Was, that did not help either. No, no, no. he <laughs> he had some had some bad moments during that campaign. Did you uh, you watched all that? Oh, I remember that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I I do I do too. I I forget exactly who was where in the audience, so but I was I was sitting around a lot of important people. <laughs> <laughs> now at that time, you would have been the treasurer of Ohio. No, no, I was I was uh, treasurer of the the United States when George Bush was in. No, how could I have been? I know I must have been there for something else, and and that's how I got the invitation. Yeah, that's yeah. right. I I was with Clinton when I was in office, so it, it, he wasn't the president. So it was when uh, uh, Bush was in. Uh, I was never there with George W. Bush. I never came back for that. But I came back for a speech with um, uh, Barack Obama uh, with the, the treasurer, um, Rosie Riaz. Oh, really? Yeah. She invited me. Uh, well, I, I was supposed to be there, but my 
my plane was canceled that morning and I they did it over the over my telephone uh, over the loudspeaker my speech and um, and I was at the airport and they were making announcements but I, I asked them afterwards I said did you hear those announcements and they said no that didn't come through oh no but I was I had a new phone and I was all set to take off and they canceled my flight and um, so I talked to the guy that was working on it and he said well I'm going to put your picture on a chair and we're going to do this over the phone. <laughs> <laughs> you, I get, well, you work with what you have in yes, those moments. Yeah. yeah. You know it's interesting because I think about uh, times like that. Uh, do you, would you like to go back to Washington again? I know you went recently. Uh, about a year ago, but uh, yeah, I'd like to go back. Um, I don't know if I'm going to get a chance to do it or not, but I, if I had the opportunity, I'd go back. I'm still on a committee for the uh, Historical Society at Treasury, and um, if they call a meeting, I'll go. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, uh, a lot of people ask me this when we were out doing the speeches. Uh, is there anything left you still want to do? Oh, I'm... I'm having a happy time, really. All the stuff that I'm doing is great, and I I want to keep on doing it as long as I can. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's going well. Yes. Yeah. In this presidential year, what do you hope happens between now and November, as far as you go? Obviously, support Biden. Mm -hmm. um, what would you like your place to be, Ohio? Do you think Ohio can go for Biden at this point? Well, I don't know. I'll tell you, it's going to be a horrible year. The The news is going to drive me crazy. I know what it's going to be like. Is it hard, it's, it's still at this point, to see negativity mm -hmm. in that way? Yes. Yes, yeah. it is. I don't like negativity. You know, it's very interesting because the people running, you have met. There's still mm -hmm. people, this is not a different generation that's there, and, and that's kind of interesting in a way. You've met mm -hmm. Joe Biden. Yes, and uh, yeah, I haven't met Trump, and I probably never will. But, um, you know, this, this campaign that's going on for the Senate, uh, the Republican campaign is something else right now. Have you seen some of those? Oh, well, I was going to bring gonna, this up. You're going to talk I'm going to bring it. I'm going to get their okay. names right here. Because this is an interesting, it, this is who's going to face Sherrod Brown here in Ohio. Mm -hmm. he's, he's the Democratic nominee. But we have three here, and I find this fascinating. I'm going to run this down. Um, we have Matt Dolan. Now, Governor DeWine has endorsed Matt Dolan. Uh, we have Bernie Moreno. Now, President Trump, former President Trump, has endorsed Bernie Moreno. And then you've got the Secretary of State LaRose, who nobody endorsed, no, which I find that peculiar. I thought DeWine might have endorsed him, but maybe not. Well, evidently not. I don't um, know. It, it's, um, it's been a mean campaign, very mean. What do you make <clears throat> of the fact that DeWine, because there was a lot made of this the other day, DeWine and Trump did not endorse the same person? I know, yeah. It's, it's kind of a surprise, but Devine has not gotten along with Trump very much, really. What do you make of Dewine? I I don't know where he's going to go when his term is up at this point, but do you think he still wants to do things? I saw a picture of him with his great granddaughter the other day that they sent out. Oh, did they? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know. He's been in public office his whole life. And when he gets out, he's going to miss it. So, you know, I, he probably would like to maybe keep on doing something. I don't know. Well, that's why I keep thinking this is it's going to be hard for this man to stop at this point, mm -hmm. even though he is 77. But he's never, there's never been a time where he wasn't running for something or in mm -hmm. some office. I think that'd be very difficult. It would be. Mm -hmm. So we'll see what happens. I, I don't know. I don't, but I don't think if President Trump wins, he's going to get any appointment to any office. No. 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 They don't seem to have a good relationship. No. At one <laughs> point, there was something, but not anymore. And who was the governor before 
um, who who was the one that that was a, ran against ran for president against Trump? Kasich. Yes. There's another interesting individual. What what became of him? Well, he's with some company now. Oh, is he? Yes, he was on television. I saw him um, not too long ago. Um, he's um, in private a private business. Yeah. He's an interesting. He's the only governor that I never interviewed. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. I, I I got Dewine yeah. and Celeste and Strickland and um, Taft. But and even uh, Gilligan mm -hmm. when he was still around, yes. but never, never, never Kasich. Kasich was always different. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that is, but people started to like him when he came out against Trump. The Democrats did, mm -hmm. but then yep. I guess he just went into private private sector. Uh, well, we've got some other races here coming up. Uh, primary will be next week here in Ohio. Uh, we got the local race here. Representative Tracy Richardson is in a nasty race oh, with yes. Weslin Davis yes. for the Republican nomination. Isn't that something? Well, they, uh, they're, that's a rough one. It's bitter. I, I keep getting things on my phone. I got a, uh, and that's a Republican primary, and of course Tracy Richardson's the incumbent. But I had uh, Tracy on this morning, and uh, she was talking about Weslin having a DUI, and it's it's getting a little rough. Oh, that's interesting. I had a, an opponent that had a DUI, two, three du, DUIs. <laughs> you didn't bring it up, though, did you? Yeah, well, no, everybody knew it. Everybody uh, knew. Ralph Wagner, when he ran for county treasurer, he was going to run. He said he was not going to run, and then he decided to run, and then they threatened him with his three DUIs. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. And then he didn't run. Now, was he a Republican or a Democrat? He was a Democrat. Oh, so he was going to be in a primary. Yeah. Oh. And and he spent most of his time at Weller's, which is the <laughs> joint next to the treasury, or to the uh, courthouse. And um, about 2 o'clock, he'd walk out of his office with a one of the big books over the treasury and couldn't get through the door. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he had a problem. Yes. He yeah, had a problem. He did. Now, it's interesting, Mary Ellen, because <laughs> what, one of the things you used to say in a lot of the speeches you gave was be very mindful of the things you do in life to keep a clean record in case you would want to do something. Right. Right. Um, so how did you do it because... As easy as it may seem, clearly it's not for a lot of people. <laughs> I mean, we've got DUIs here, we've well, got DUIs there. It's all up to the individual. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, is there, I, I don't, you know, you would think that it would be easy enough, but here we are, the same thing that was going on in the mid-70s, here we are in 2024. and It's worse. Yeah, yeah it's, still. It's getting worse, you yeah. know. It's, it's very strange how... Well, you know, the things they're saying about these guys running for... Um, the Senate, I mean, these things are bad that they are, I mean, they must be true because they wouldn't be able to say them if they weren't true. And so, you know, I listened to all this and I think, good heavens, have they been doing all that, you know? It's rough. <laughs> it's rough. We're going to take a quick break here. We've got a whole nother half and we're going to, Mary Ellen's going to give her speech at the end of the program today, but we've got more stuff to talk about. More races and more things in the news. Back with the 40th Treasurer of the United States, Mary Ellen Withrow, right after this. When you got to the late 60s and the Elgin School Board, uh, this was a very big deal. First woman ever elected to Elgin School Board. How did that come to be? How did you decide you were going to run for this? Well, I had two teachers come and ask me to run, and uh, there were no women on the board, and I, I thought about it for a while, and Norman and I talked about it, and I said, well, I think I'm going to run. So I did, and it was uh, a race against, uh, against five men, and, and it, it was very hard for me. I, I was not... I was kind of a shy person, and um, 
I tell you, all, all the years of campaigning have totally changed me. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Brought you out to yes. the yeah. office in January of 93, and this is all happening in the beginning of 94. Well, the women executives of the state government called and wanted to know if I was interested in it, and I said I was. And, and then the, um, the Democratic chairman of the United States was from Ohio and he called and wondered to know if I was interested. I said I was. And so then I talked to um, John Glenn and, and Metzenbaum. They were both the in office at the time. And, and of course there was a lot of people after the uh, treasurer's position. And, and it went on until um, the summer of 90, 94 or 93 when um, I was told it was down to two people. Uh, a woman from Colorado who had lost a, a race for the Senate, I think it was, or Congress, I forget which. But, um, and then it was November 22nd of 1993 I can remember that because it's when John Kennedy was his mm -hmm. when he was killed. It was the anniversary, and uh, they said I had the job, but I couldn't tell anybody, and so um, I was I couldn't stop smiling. <laughs> what was the process of coming up with the signature that went on the money? Well, that happened before I was sworn in. Um, I. My uh, predecessor went to prison, so they had a felon's name on the money, and they did not want that to be on there any longer than possible. So they brought the pen and paper to the airport when I was getting ready to fly back to uh, Ohio, and I was signing it, and I was people. It was crowded and I went over by the telephones and tried to sign over there and people were bumping me and I went back in the private room and signed my name 20 times and I marked number 12 and that's what was on the money. When you took office in March of 94, what do you remember about that day? Boyd Benson was there, Secretary of the Treasury, uh, Al Gore, Vice President, what was that day like? Well, it was a big day. <laughs> it was very, very exciting, and I was very excited. <laughs> so, so, Mary Ellen, congratulations to you. And now, uh, if you will uh, stand here and in close ranks if you wish, if you would raise your right hand and repeat after me. Uh, I state your name. I, Mary Ellen Withrow. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend. That I will support and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies foreign and domestic. Against all enemies foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation. Without any mental reservation. Or purpose of evasion. Or purpose of evasion. That, and that I will well and faithfully. And that I will well and faithfully. Discharge the duties of the office. Discharge the duties of the office. On which I am about to enter. On which I am about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. The job of treasurer started in 1777. That means it's older than
in the Treasury Department. Alexander Hamilton didn't become Secretary of the Treasury till 12 years later. And all that time, we have never had a treasurer that's gone from county treasurer to state treasurer to national treasurer. Mary Ellen is our first, and we're proud of that one. Over time, people have called the currency many things. They've called it greenbacks, bills, dollars. But one word I know that Buckeyes like to use is bucks. <laughs> Five bucks, ten bucks. Well, it's the Treasury Secretary. I want to say something to you, Mary Ellen. If I ever find out that you're autographing our dollar bills, Mary Ellen Withrow, go Bucks. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to consider that a bit much. <laughs> but now it's my honor to introduce. tell you that even before this occasion, marking the formal beginning of uh, her, her service, she has been uh, deep in meetings with uh, uh, members of the reinventing government team, uh, and they've been discussing all kinds of ideas. I have to tell you, I think that our reinventing government experts may have learned more from Mary Ellen than Mary Ellen learned from them, because she was already way up to speed on a lot of new ideas to bring uh, efficiency and reinvention and a new standard of excellence to the important duties that she is about to perform. <laughs> when I first uh, went into public service on a local school board in 1969, I had no idea it was going to lead me here. After uh, 25 years, a quarter of a century from Marion, Ohio to Washington, D.C., and I have loved every step of the way. Uh, I wanted to just present something to the secretary and the vice president that I have with me today. We're talking about bucks. And we're talking about uh, uh, greenbacks, and I want to say there are a lot of Buckeyes in this room, I know. <laughs> and we're proud to be Buckeyes, right? Well, I'd like to present one, two, and one, two. Oh, it was unbelievable, <laughs> really. I mean, if somebody had told me that's what I was going to do, I, I would have been shocked, you know, because I had no idea what I was going to end up doing. And um, I, I really feel that people should take their, uh, they should take advantage of things that they have the opportunity to do and not worry about, um, you know, whether they're ready for it or not. So many times I've heard people say they they needed to do this or that before they ran for office or something. And I thought um, that moment that you make a decision to do something like that, it's it's got to be the right moment. And um, it, it, it doesn't always, you don't always realize it. You know? Well, look at this point. You know, you, you've had a tremendous life. When you look back on it, do you ever think, wow, that was something? Oh yeah, I don't know how I did it. You know, you, you, you look at how hard those things were to accomplish, and I really don't know how I did it. Yeah. You've got a long ways to go yet, but when people open up those history books after all of us are gone, in this room at this time, because people are going to drive by your school, they'll be at the Historical Society, your museum's there, you are in the history books. 
How would you like to be remembered by people who knew you? <laughs> well, I just want them to remember that I had a good time. <laughs>And we're back with one of my favorite people, 40th Treasurer of the United States, Mary Ellen Withrow, celebrating 30 years of being sworn in, uh, since being sworn in as 40th Treasurer of the United States, March the 1st, 1994, and here we are in 2024. We're talking about races coming up next week in the primary. We covered the Senate race uh, with Dolan, LaRose, and Moreno. Uh, that's Republican. We talked about the uh, local one here, our representative, with uh, Richardson and Weslyn Davis, and that's W-E-Z-L-Y-N-N. -E -N. That's her first name? That's her first name. Boy, that's unusual. And that's against an incumbent, Tracy Richardson, who did a appear at the, um, at, uh, at the reception. Yes. And also, I saw her at the dance, Turn Up the Heat yes, dance. Yes, yes. She, she goes to everything. Yeah. I see her everywhere. She goes to the women's club home for different things, and she's a, she does her job. And I think she was at the pancake breakfast. Yes, she I, was. I, I think she I was did. Pour, she was pouring coffee. So, I think it was her husband that was pouring coffee, too. Yeah. So we've ran into her a lot Yeah. over the last yeah. few days. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to talk about that before we get back to the politics here, that Turn Up the Heat dance. Uh, Carrington mm -hmm. and I went this year, and you were there with uh, your daughter Linda, and yet a guest with you. What do you, for people who haven't been to that event, what would you tell them about it? Oh, it's a it's a nice event, and they're they're fixing up the women's club home, which is a marvelous home. They have done so much, and it looks so nice. But they're still working on the building that. I guess was the press building or whatever. I, I really don't know what was in that before, but it's going to be where they store the um, records and have their meetings. And it was in bad shape, but that's where the money's going for this this event this year, where they raised $80,000 at the event. You know, I was so surprised that night. I took Carrington. She said she wanted to go to a ritzy kind of event. Yeah. And those are hard to find nowadays. Well, that's true. It really is. Yeah. And she got dressed up and we went. And what was so fun for me was I thought, you know, the diversity of that crowd mm -hmm. was, was, was vast, but everybody had a good time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they do. And their, their food was good and, and um, they, they handle it well. Um, it, it's always interesting to see who the sponsors are, you know. Uh, I had the uh, Boyd Funeral Home right in front of me. And, um, and then there was the Finney Dentist group over there. They, they were all, and then one of their people was a dancer, but Linda. Oh. Your Linda. Linda did, Sims. She won. And, she was great. That was what, uh, as we're sitting there, our own Linda Sims was one of the celebrity dancers, one of the yeah, eight. She was and good. We're, we're sitting there, and it was the first time I had went to that event, and she won the the Best Female Dancer Award, and we could not have been happier. And, and Linda, I don't think will mind me saying this, because she said it to me the day before, she was the oldest dancer there yes, that night. yes. Because everybody else, I think, was... I don't think anybody was in there. Except for George. That is true. George <laughs> did dance. That is, not part of the competition, <laughs> no. but George did dance. George Casotas did yeah. get up. Yes. Well, you know, no, he wasn't part of the competition, but um, he danced. He did dance. Mm -hmm. He did. Uh, with Suzanne Harris, Martha Douse's daughter. Is that who that That's was? That's who that was. I didn't know who that was. Yeah. Know. It was an interesting... <laughs> part of that dance. Yes. Uh, you know, Mary Ellen, uh, did, w did you ever think of doing something like that? Um, well, I used to dance a lot, but I was never in a contest. Yeah. Well, I would imagine that's very <laughs> nerve-wracking. Oh, yeah. Oh. Well, they practice. They Each one, their partner is a, a professional dancer, uh, or they work for a dance organization or whatever. But... Um, Yes, you're. <laughs> they're all so nervous when they do this, and um, I I think it's um, a fun idea. It was uh, I think it was Nancy Hafer's idea that started this about 
five years ago. I've gone to every one. I thought Valerie Wigton did a wonderful job. Oh, she night. did. She's a good. She's a good president. She greeted me when I came in the door. Was did so. She? Oh yes, very good. nice. And, yeah. You know, and and you, you you got a seat too. I did. Yeah. I did. So, I was glad of that. So yeah. Valerie was very very kind, and we had good mm -hmm. seats, and it was it was all very well done, and I think we gave a nice report on it. I, I had nothing negative to say, but I, I what I will say is I did talk to Ray Grogan, the prosecutor who was in it, not that night, but I saw him. It was the pancake breakfast I saw Ray, and he said, never again. That's how tense it is. I mean, it's so nerve-wracking to yeah. get up there in front of people. Oh, my gosh, yes. And I remember, yeah. I, I think it was Finney, uh, the young Dr. Finney, who they asked her while she was up there, they said, would you be part of Christmas at the palace? And she said, no. Yeah. <laughs> she said, for as nervous as I've been for this and as dry as my mouth yeah. has been, no, yes. <laughs> I'll pass on that. <laughs> it, I, that would be terrifying for me to do something like that. Well, you know, the at the palace, uh, I mean, that's that's really something. I mean, it's wonderful what they do too. The w one year they asked me to be part of Christmas at the palace, and then I saw the audition schedule, the rehearsal yeah. schedule, yeah. and I said, "There is no way." Yeah. Right. I mean, you really have to be committed for about a month. And if you don't show up, you might as well forget it. Yeah. So yeah. I thought. You know, yeah. I, I know my limitation. It's, this is just a little too heavy. But they do a great job, and, and I think Christmas at the Palace is very, very nice. The only race we didn't talk about here is the 4th District. This will be the Jim Jordan uh, opponent. Right now, it's Tammy Wilson, who ran against him last time, running in the primary against Steve Thomas, kind of an unknown. Uh, will be on the radio with me on Thursday, so people can go to the website and check out that uh, that interview. What do you make of this? We've got uh, Tammy running again. Uh, she ran last time, didn't win. Mm -hmm. And we've got this newcomer, Steve Thomas. I don't think he comes from politics. Uh, I believe he comes from the private sector. Oh, really? I believe so. Mm -hmm. Any thoughts on this one? Well, <clears throat> I think Jim Jordan, has, he, he's got his... His area that he's uh, responsible for, it's a big area. He's got a huge support, and it's going to be very difficult for whoever runs against him. I think I saw the other day he's got $9 million sacked away to run for office. So that's an uphill battle, I think, for anybody at this point. Plus, he's got so much publicity, uh, he's on television all the time. I'm embarrassed to say that my congressman is Jim Jordan. That's interesting. It is. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, you know, when you were in Marion prior to going to Washington, this wasn't such a Republican area. No. It was different. It was, um, we had labor leaders and good people in, in the party that worked hard, and it was much different then. You know, not. Uh, I don't want to harp on this too much because I do want to get to the Robert Herr, uh, I guess, testimony that we've had the last few days. But you've come out against people and endorsed people over the years, and we've talked about it on the air over the years. When it was happening, uh, you came out strong against Josh Mandel when he was treasurer of Ohio, and there have been others. Uh, and you just said you're embarrassed that Jim Jordan... Have you ever been more embarrassed or against any politician in Ohio than Jim Jordan? No. He's the one? Mm hmm Is there any particular reason? Oh, he's terrible. I mean, he's, he's, he's disgusting. He doesn't, um, all he does is pick on people. And um, when, when he, he calls all these, he's in charge of a committee. I don't forget which one. But he's always calling up these committee meetings and interviewing people and trying to make their life miserable for no reason at all. It's He's an interesting person for people who uh, have dealt with him. Well, they ought to go back to Ohio State and his wrestling career and talk about that for a while. Why do you think that got swept under the rug? Well, somehow they did, and it shouldn't be. It's it's in, So you think there's more to that? Oh, yes, heard. yes. He had to know about it. It's just like when you, you say... You know, he's, if he says he didn't know about it, he had to have known about it, what went on. It's it's an interesting story. We heard about it a little bit, but then it kind of faded, faded out. Yeah. Faded out. Um, 
Special Counsel Robert Hur. Now, this is the gentleman who was looking into President Biden's uh, private documents that were kept at his home in Delaware and said, we're not going to prosecute, but then went on to say, we're not going to prosecute, and I don't have the quote in front of me, but basically it was Biden is old and forgetful and so on and so forth. Well, he's been in front of a committee, and I'll tell you, he's getting it from both ways. He's getting it from the Republicans, Jim Jordan being one of them, mm -hmm. uh, saying that how can you let Biden off the hook for being old and forgetful? It's a, it's a double standard against Trump. And then he's getting it from the Democrats, because now that we've seen the report and the interviews that went down, Biden really, he, 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 he didn't get the year right that his son died, but he did get the date right. And it was, there's more to that uh, question than would lead you to believe if you just saw the final report. And I forget the, uh, the uh, person who asked the question, but um, the Democrat, but called it a political firestorm that you set off by making those comments. So Robert Hur is not in good shape right now. I think Merritt Garland's in, at fault too for releasing that. He didn't have to release that. What do you make of him? This was the gentleman, Merrick Garland, who was Obama's pick to be the Supreme Court Justice, didn't get it because Mitch McConnell held it up, and then yeah. uh, he, Biden made him Attorney General, and he let this come through. Yes, he did, and he shouldn't have. What do you make of that? We've learned that Mitch McConnell's going to step down yes. as head of the Republican Party. Now, he's in office as a uh, in Kentucky, and I think, till 2026. So he's not leaving office anytime soon, but uh, stepping down as the head of the minority leader right now of the Senate. And he said he's going to vote for Trump. He did. After all Trump did to him. Said some things about his wife that yeah, weren't too nice. Yeah, he picked on his wife pretty bad. Yeah. <clears throat> well, do you think Republicans have to do that at this point? Well, I, if they would all band together and, and not help Trump, I think things would be a lot better. You know, Mitch McConnell is interesting in that um, whether you like him or dislike him, I don't think there's anybody more responsible for the makeup of the Supreme Court than him right now. Right. How do you think he was able to get away with that? I don't know. It, it, there should have been some way they could have stopped that. I mean, he, he held that off for a year. Oh, yeah. And, um, and then they had this appointment... The last appointment was within a few months of the uh, election, wasn't it? And and they didn't, you know, they didn't say a thing about that. But um, I mean, their reasoning for not appointing him back uh, when Obama was in office was because it was too. Cl uh, it was a year that they were campaigning, but it, it was a whole year, and it it was not fair at all. Yeah. And and in the end, um, that Trump got in and he appointed a yeah. conservative justice and there you have what, what became. How big do you think um, Roe versus Wade, the overturn of that, is going to be in the presidential election? Uh, Biden mentioned it quite he, a bit. Yeah. I, I yeah, he talked to the Supreme Court sitting right he did. in front of him. He did. And told him that uh, they <clears throat> shouldn't have done that. <laughs> yeah. You know, I was thinking about Biden the other day, and we talked about the negativeness in politics now. But, you know, he, he took a jab at Lindsey Graham that made Lindsey Graham laugh. Yeah, that was so cute. Yeah. yeah. And even when Mitch McConnell said he was leaving, Biden said, I like him as a person. I'm, well, he prob probably does. You don't hear that much anymore. No. People don't tend to be nice. But he was in the Senate all those years working with him. Was it? You don't have to give us a name, but was there ever somebody who you had to work with that you didn't necessarily uh, you liked them, but you didn't agree with them? Oh yeah. Yeah. How, how do you deal with that? How do you deal with that situation? You no, know, you deal with it the best way you can. <laughs> For some, it has gotten more difficult. Yes. People used to do that without any trouble. Now it's it's almost becoming a bygone thing. Yeah. I don't know why. Yeah. Somebody better figure that out at some point or nothing's going to get done. Uh, are you concerned, as everybody seems to be, about the border? Every, people were wearing pins at the State of the Union. and Well, <clears throat> I'm just really glad my ancestors came when they did. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> it's a little different now. <laughs> yes. We have a little different feeling about uh, the border. I, I had two brothers come from Germany, Frederick and George Heinemann, and <laughs> it all came way back. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm one of the first families in Marion County. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Heinemann. Yeah. Wow. You know, it's uh, it's fascinating when you look at it. What's On the whole, as we head into this primary, as we head into this election year, what do you make of it so far? Well, I, as I said, it's going to be terrible. It, it's, it's mean and nasty and... I I don't know. I just hate to think of the months ahead. We're going to listen to all this. You said you you think Jim Jordan's pretty safe. What about Sherrod Brown? How is he going to have an? Oh, he's he's got good things on uh, television, and uh, I don't know. It's you know, I heard today that um, Matt Nolan is uh, winning. It was ahead. Have you heard that? I, I I think in the polls. Yes. Yeah. And so that's his opponent. Um, you know, I'll have to wait and see who his opponent is, but he's going to have a rough race. You know, you know before we, I want to, we're going to do the speech here, but um, when Mitch McConnell was leaving his position, I thought it was interesting. In the speech he gave, he kind of gave a, a shot uh, about age. Yeah. And there's parting, but, yeah. you know, let the mm -hmm. younger generation come in, and mm -hmm. clearly that was directed sure. at Biden. Sure. Uh, what did you make of his parting words? Well, I... I just don't care for the man. He's got a different... And this, this health issue he has, uh, that's not good. No, he should have quit a long time ago. He's, he's, uh, he's had those spells of, you know, standing at the podium, and whether he goes into a stroke or what happens to him, I don't know. But when you're in a situation like that, in a job like that, you should quit. Yeah, it's 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 fascinating, and he's going to be in office two more years. Yeah, he'll be there through twenty twenty six. Now, what we're going to do here is Mary Ellen's going to read the speech, the acceptance speech that she gave on March the first, uh, nineteen ninety four. Now, we have this is the same speech we did at all the schools, and um, I'm going to give it a little introduction as I did at all the schools because I think that's important, uh, because I think it's important to pay attention to the idea that, uh, as one of the Associated Press articles said, that Mary Ellen's story really is an inspiration to the future and still going on. This really isn't just about the past. It still is about the future and what somebody can do. And as Matt and Carrington so nicely pointed out, it's an inspiration to women and it's an inspiration to anybody from Marion that you can go as far as you need to go. And personally, over the years, Mary Ellen has always been so nice to me that it was a thrill to get to introduce her uh, everywhere we went because there is nobody nicer than Mary Ellen Withrow, and we're all so proud in Marion that she was able to achieve what she was able to achieve because it, we did go along on the ride with her uh, for that period of time and still on that ride, so we're still all happy to be going down the road. Here, reading the speech that she gave 40 years ago, 30 years ago, 40th Treasurer of the United States, Mary Ellen Withrow. Do you want me to include the front part? Sure. Yeah. Well, thank you, Vice President Gore and Secretary of the Treasury Benson, Congressman Lou Stokes, and of course, Marshall Bennett, President of the National Association of State Treasurers. To the members of the Treasury team and all my friends who came to be with me today and my family, I'm always very ha happy to have my family with me on the day that I'm sworn in. They always have come to my swearing-ins as State Treasurer and it was great to have them to be able to be here today. We're talking about bucks, and we're talking about greenbacks. And I want to say there are a lot of Buckeyes in this room. I know, and we are proud to be Buckeyes. Just a note of trivia that I wanted to add when my family was introduced. Kevin Legg, who is with Goodyear, designed the tires for the presidential limousines and vice presidential limousines. So I thought that was a bit of trivia for my family. I want to say a very special thanks to President Clinton for putting his faith and trust in me for this high office. 
It's a proud day for my family and a proud day for Ohio. And Samuel Chase showed good judgment when he chose Isaiah Rogers, who was one of the last architects of the Ohio Capitol to come and design this cash room. Isn't it a beautiful room? It's just gorgeous. Another thing that happened on March 1st, 1803, Ohio became a state. I don't know how they knew I was going to be sworn in on March 1st. <laughs> <laughs> when I first went into public service on a local school board in 1969, I had no idea that it would lead me here after 25 years, a quarter of a century, from Marion, Ohio to Washington, D.C., and I've loved every step of the way. I not only have loved the life I have lived, I have also learned from it. I will be the first person, as was mentioned, that has ever been county treasurer, state treasurer, and U.S. treasurer. All this experience in the county and state levels have given me a full range of understanding of public finance and of the public needs that are out there. I've helped American farmers and small business owners push down interest rates. I've helped a Euro European democracies beat down archaic financial institutions. People are diverse. Their problems are diverse. But their solutions arise from a common ground of communication and sound financial practice. Successful government is responsive government. The first step towards solving a problem is recognizing that there is a problem. You can't do that if you're isolated within walls of miscommunication and mistrust and prejudice. Those walls can take up space until they support us and shield us against the unknown. Well, these walls do shield us, but they shield us from the wrong things. They shield us from diversity, innovation, and creativity. They keep us from learning through new experiences and fresh perspectives. They box us into a tiny world of our own making. I have dedicated my life to tearing down walls and building up people. My job is to listen to the needs and the dreams of the people. I've done that for 25 years. I'm doing it now, and I'm going to do it as U.S. Treasurer. That is what I do. In my journey of service, this step is the greatest. I like to think of my life as a river winding down through the years. It's made up of an infinite number of fluid moments. Looking back, you can remember some of those moments very clearly and others sort of take on a hazy perspective like the waters of your life. And there are those very special few that you see in the moment just before they fall into the stream. A single droplet, clear and full and perfect. This is one of those moments, clear and full and perfect. You know, even to hear that here, Mary Ellen, it's just something. Yeah. That, that speech has such a ring to it. And, and who, that speech was written for you. Yes. And when you saw it and read it the first time, what did you think? I didn't, it didn't really get to me right away. Yeah. I had to think about it a while. I, that was with all my speeches. I had to make them my own. Um, with my own words, you know, change a few things here and there. And, um, but I, I tell you, after this past few days of, of giving this speech, I appreciate it more and more. That end paragraph yeah. that's quoted in the star, mm -hmm. what does that mean to you in your own life? Oh, it's, um, it's powerful. That's a powerful statement. Obviously being sworn in as treasurer of the United States stick out. Are there other moments that are vivid in your mind? Yes, when I got my... Um, uh, some of the awards I've gotten, uh, uh, it, the, the, that was what I would think of. Um, and, and then um, 
Oh, there, there's been a lot of wonderful moments that I've had. Yeah. I bet. Yeah. You know, when it, it, it's a good time for reflection. Certainly that speech f speaks to reflection. Mm -hmm. When you reflect back, uh, in the last line of the video that we showed at the schools, you, you said, I've had a good time. Uh, it's how you'd like to be remembered. Mm -hmm. But what, what kind of expounding, expanding on that, what has been the good time for you? Well, uh, being able to uh, do things for people and create programs that have helped people. It's, it's very interesting, all the things that I've created, um, and I'm very proud of all of them, really. When you were in high school, because that's where we just were, a lot of these high schools, mm -hmm. would you have ever thought that your life was going to turn out that way? Oh, I had no idea. I didn't know what I was going to do. I was just floating along, you know. What, what lesson does that teach you in life? That in high school, you didn't know, and this now, ref looking back, is where you ended? Well... <clears throat> You know, so many times I think uh, people set their heart on something. I didn't, because I didn't know what I was going to do. But a lot of people are able to do that. And, um, I mean, like, did you know you were going to be a, a radio announcer? No, it was, it was by uh, accident. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's kind of the way the politics was. It was by accident. And and I loved it, you know, and so that's how it all started, and it just went. What was so appealing about it once you got involved? Because you had done other things, worked for the Red Cross. Mm -hmm. Well, it was the people. I loved talking to people, and going around and giving speeches. I did. I wasn't very happy the first few speeches I made, but they got better, and I got better, and. Um, and I enjoyed it, and I still I enjoy it very much. Yeah. At at this point, when you think back about those years, is it tough to look back at the early years and see things that you say ah, I would have done that differently now? Well, that doesn't bother me. I I could have been a lot better at what I was doing in the beginning, but you got to work at it and get experience and get familiar with the whole situation. There's that learning process that's that's very important. You know, I think that is a lesson in and of itself that I think kids, especially, see somebody who's successful at something and they think, I can't be that good, but at their age, they weren't that good. Right. You, it takes work. That's right. To get there. Yes. I mean, I, I don't think anybody walks out of the box just knowing everything. No. <laughs> yeah. So it's 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 always a learning curve. Yes. That you're on. Yes. And I find that to be one of the most fascinating things because I think people think you've got to start at the top. Well, I wouldn't want to start at the top in this business. No. No, it, it would be a disaster. <laughs> well, when did you think that you were prepared to be treasurer of the United States? Well, I, I thought I, I had been state treasurer for 12 years. I thought I was ready. I was ready to do something else. And this sounded like a wonderful job. And it was. And it was. I Ab was invited to everything. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good time. That is, that's for sure. And, of course, I want to thank Mary Ellen for coming on and, and giving us candid opinions on things and also sharing that speech, which we've never done on this program. And as I said, it is the 30th anniversary year, and we've had other inquiries about doing this other places, so we'll see what happens. And it certainly is fun to go out and do it. So I know that uh, that can possibly happen. There is going to be another episode uh, out here very soon. Uh, Matt Morgan's going to be a part of that because I know he wanted to ask Mary Ellen some questions about uh, what she thinks about things going on in the world and current events. So we'll have that as well because Carrington is out on vacation right now. So we'll come back with uh, Mary Ellen and Matt in another episode. But for this particular episode, we're going to tie a knot. Uh, in it with Mary Ellen Withrow, 40th Treasurer of the United States. Scott Spears heading for the dugout.